Hey guys, today I want to talk about gear. I know I get a lot of questions about what I use, why I use, and uh, I don't know, what it looks like. <laughs> I, uh, I list everything in the description of my videos, what I'm using during those flights. I have all my, from, from my radio to the goggles I'm using, to the uh, receiver I'm using in the goggles, to everything on the aircraft part by part, but I'd like to show you guys exactly what I use and how I have it set up, um, and I'll talk a little bit about it too so you can understand why I use the things that I do. So hopefully you enjoy. So first I'd like to talk about the aircraft. This is an Impulse RC 5-inch Alien, essentially the same exact aircraft as the RR5, except it's got purple hardware. That is essentially the only difference. The top plate is modified um, via Chad Capper's idea. This is something that allows you to run the Triumph or the Spironet or whatever right out of the back of the aircraft and it will not damage the, air the antenna when you crash uh, into something backwards or fall onto the back of the aircraft thus pinching the, uh, uh, the coaxial cable and causing the antenna to be rendered useless. So yeah, that's the coolest thing that I've seen modification wise and Chad Capper had the idea to do that. So as far as the hardware on this thing, I'm running the Luminaire 2206 2350 kV motors. They have been the smoothest motors that I've ever used and also the most efficient. I know there's a lot of hype with motors these days on max power and uh, no one really looks at amp consumption and that is a large factor for me. If you have four motors drawing 25 plus amps, that's over 100 amps that your battery cannot deliver because a 1300 4S is in, in physically impossible or it isn't physically impossible for a 1300 Forest to deliver that kind of amperage consistently and also will damage the battery over time. So if you don't care about your batteries, then go ahead and buy the motors that give you the max thrust because that's what you should do. So the ESCs that I'm running are the KISS 24 amps. This have the 1.03H firmware on them, which is the newest firmware. It flies amazing. I can't complain about it. It's the most locked in feeling quad I've ever had. Um, I'm completely happy and I will not be changing anything anytime soon. So I love these ESCs. They do not pay me to say that. I genuinely love KISS product. And yeah, I, I can say that I will not be switching anytime soon. Uh, unless something ridiculous comes out, but I highly doubt that will happen. The flight controller is the KISS FC. The KISS FC is a very simple flight controller, has a built-in 6S regulator so you can run directly off the board, directly off the PDB um, and power your flight controller instead of running a regulator. It is one of the best FCs and it feels the best and coupled with the KISS 24 amps is probably the best combination for flight characteristics that I've ever felt. I know people will disagree with me, but for, for what I'm doing as far as acrobatic freestyle and smooth video are my main concerns. Those things seem to um, go perfectly with this combination. So I cannot complain and I will not be changing anytime soon. Um, as far as the receiver, I'm running an S-Bus X4R from FR Sky. Um, just the standard one with the pins on it and everything. I'm not getting too crazy and running that new one. Don't really see the need to. This thing's been bulletproof for me and I don't really like to change things that there's no reason to. This thing works perfectly for me. I also run the TBS PMP50, which stands for Plug and Play 50. I've modified it slightly to fit on this frame. Uh, it is one of the best things I've found for like a sim simple plug and play issue that gives you the best video out. Now I know a lot of people will argue that fact, but you know I've been using the PMP for a very long time now. Um, it has no issues doing up to 80 amps and actually reads accurately up to about 80 amps even though it's only rated for 50 and it gives you filtered 5 volts and 12 volts out for your video transmitter and your uh, camera. It is one of the coolest things that I've found that fits on a mini quad. Now I will say it's probably a little out of date now but when I first started using it it was a very great product and one of the only things on the market that actually worked. So you know it still actually works uh, unlike most products that are coming out today in this industry so you know that's why I still use it. It also has a built-in microphone um, that is another reason that I really love that product. Now as far as how I mount my antennas because I know people are going to ask, um, these are standard uh, 2.4 antennas. I have just routed them out to the top and out of the bottom so that I have polarization when I am diving stuff because they are 90 degrees out from each other. Uh, I have vertically polarized when I'm tilted forward flying in forward, fast forward flight and then I also have um, a vertically polarized antenna when I'm diving straight down something. So it's been pretty awesome to have 
um, polarization and not losing that signal when you're diving down something because your antenna is slightly out of polarization. Also, it gets it away from the video transmitting antenna, which is outputting 800 milliwatts on the TBS Unify Pro. Um, Non-HV, this is just the standard TBS Unify Pro. It's my favorite video transmitter to date. It is the smallest thing and it seems to perform really well and it has very little issues as far as burning itself up or anything like that, unlike most video transmitters on the market today. The camera that I'm running is the HS1177, which is a pretty standard camera, but I can say that the GoPro 2 lens, which is a replacement lens found on Amazon for a GoPro 2, screws right into it and is one of the best lenses that I have used to date. Um, I first saw this, um, Luke Bannister was using it at uh, DR1, and I freaked out over the situation that was in front of me and went and immediately ordered some because I figured it would be... Uh, it was that much of an improvement over what I was currently using. It was literally like he was cheating. So yeah, that is the lens that I'm using and I love it. I have plenty of them and I will not be switching to anything else. It gives you a large field of view without any distortion and very vivid colors. Now the props that I'm using are the HQ5040 tri-blades and these are the yellow ones. Um, they're just pretty standard. I mean, this is my favorite prop. It's the lightest prop. The reason I don't run indestructible props or polycarbonate props is because, you know, if you're going to crash, um, I prefer to... I prefer to crash, honestly. Uh, I want to make myself a better pilot, and, and a better pilot for me is someone that can do anything anywhere and, and not crash. I know crashes are inevitable, but, you know, if you're going to crash and you feel like you're going to crash, um, if you want to do something sketchy, put on a prop that's not going to break. But, you know, for the most stuff that I'm doing, nothing can deliver the performance that this propeller delivers um, as far as responsiveness and that get up and go that you really want in particular times when you're flying. So, that is why I use that prop. Now, how I mount my GoPro, a lot of people ask me all the time. They ask me about the red tape on the GoPro as well. And the red tape is essentially there to protect this little screen. There is nothing there other than, it, it kind of like actually makes the red light glow a little brighter on the front of the GoPro. But I mean, other than that, I just did it because I don't like to see that screen get broken and I'd rather not look at it even if it's not broken. And if it is broken, you have no idea it's broken because it's covered by something. And I have a GoPro lens protector on here. This is just a standard GoPro lens protector. I actually prefer the ones directly from GoPro because they are glass and they do not scratch very easily. The ones that you can buy that are cheaper that you buy from some of these places. I think ReadyMade RC is the actually only other place that I know of that sells a decent GoPro lens protector in this form factor. So all the other Chinese ones, the ones you find on eBay, they're really difficult to get, not only because you have to wait for them to ship, they're cheap and they do scratch very easily. So yeah, that is my real um, downside to the other GoPro lenses. So I buy them directly from GoPro. And as far as the back of my GoPro, it's cracked at the moment, but I did have this really cool screen protector on there from a guy named Konasty, um, Eric Konasty, uh, that's his name online. And yeah, it was a really freaking cool thing. It helps protect the rear of the GoPro Hero 4 Silver. And I really enjoy it. So if you guys want to check that thing out, that thing's pretty cool as well. And really, that's essentially the entire aircraft. I know that was a lot, but um, that's, that's what I use exactly in this form factor. This is the aircraft I fly on a daily basis.